So if you saw our last video, you know that this is part two of a two-part series. We have a bit of a problem. We had a massive, terrible noise on the highway. Our first ever mechanical last week. Here we are just a week later on the side of the highway. This time, I don't know what's going on, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna need to get towed this time. All right, so when we left off from the first video, we had our coach in for repair, getting the kingpins and the new alignment. Well, we went and picked it up. They hadn't left it plugged in and they didn't run a generator, so the batteries were toast. Fortunately, we had auxiliary start. We're able to get it started and get to a campground for the night. So we got up early the next morning and we started to make our way to Las Vegas. I had a friend flying in from Australia to meet us, so we were on a deadline to get to Vegas. Everything seemed to be going pretty fine yeah. at, until we got to Wickenburg. Well, we had a pretty exciting day today. We uh, made a mechanical day with the coach. We started off by coming back to Phoenix from Colorado, spending Thanksgiving with family over the weekend. 1 a.m. on Sunday morning, we went and picked up the coach from the shop. It was in the shop all week for a suspension repair. They had left it out front of the shop. We arrived to pick it up, went to start it, and it was completely dead with the chassis battery. Fortunately, there was still a little bit of juice left in the other batteries, and so when I hit the auxiliary start button, I was able to start the coach and drive it to the campground we were staying at that night. We got able to get a few hours sleep before our big drive to Las Vegas. I was hoping that being hooked up to power all night might charge the batteries, but in the morning when it was time to go, uh, again, the chassis battery didn't start it. Had to use auxiliary start. But it did start right up with that. And I thought, okay, well, we'll drive for a couple hours. We're going to try and get to Las Vegas to meet one of Julie's friends who's flying in from Australia. I drove a couple hours and we stopped in Wickenburg, Arizona to get some fuel. Turned off the coach, thinking a couple hours would be fine, got plenty of juice. When I tried to restart the coach after getting the gas, it did not start up again and it did not work with the auxiliary start either. We had roadside assistance, we'd called them, but turns out there was another roadside assistance guy who was already in the parking lot helping someone else, but who had locked the keys in the car. Dan's the man! Dan is the man! So he was able to help us get started, get the coach running, and was able to confirm that our alternator was fine, and that as long as I don't turn off the vehicle, I should be able to make it all the way to Vegas just fine. So we hit the road, we drove, uh, 45 minutes to an hour from we were driving up this hill and I was or driving 60 and then I was losing speed because it's a long hill and I got down to about 40 and whenever I'm 20 miles an hour below the speed limit I like to put my hazard lights on and I'll let people know I hit the hazard lights and at that moment there was a terrible clunk with what sounds like the transmission uh, and lights on the dash started going crazy and I lost some power with the vehicle but it was still running so I got into the shoulder, thank goodness there's a huge shoulder here. Um, we've been really fortunate with that. The two major mechanicals we've had, we've both had a really nice big shoulder. And this one is not so scary because the speeds aren't as high because it's a big hill. So the big trucks when they come by aren't going by really fast. So that's nice. Eventually, once I got onto the shoulder, I went you know another 100 meters or so and the engine died. This has been one heck of a day, and we're definitely far from being done. Pulled onto the shoulder, um, and the engine died. So, yeah, so we are stuck on a hill, <laughs> but we need to go and call roadside assistance now. If I can get sole coverage, if and not, if not we'll at least we have the tow the vehicle mini. that we can drive somewhere to get sole coverage. So Ninety percent sure we're going to need to get towed out of this one. So I'm going to go unhook the car. Oh, it's yeah. starting to rain. I'm going to go get the car We've off the dolly while it's still in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by cactus, so... <laughs> oh, I'm part of the adventure! <laughs> Alright, let's go do it. We'll, we'll give you an update again next. soon. Alright. Wish us luck. We know we need a new chassis battery regardless. And we know it's going to be a long time for a tow truck to get gears. Now Mark is removing the chassis battery from the coach. We're hoping that is the problem. Because he hit the hazard lights going up a steep grade and going slow and caused a right clunk noise, didn't it, huh? Well, that'd be awfully serendipitous that it'd be the exact second that I hit that button, but 
it just might have taken the electricity down so far that it didn't like it. And uh, the transmission started complaining and then the engine it's ended up dying. We're hoping Three. it's just a battery. Yeah, not some major electrical systems issue. So. Yeah, never has been one hell of a month for coach repairs. Yes, it has. I stayed with the coach um, to wait for a tow with the roadside assistance. Julie drove back to Wickenburg to get us a battery because we know we're going to need that regardless and there's a potential that could be beneficial in getting us running. And there goes my phone. Okay, a little update for y'all. Um, just got off the phone with roadside assistance and they've got a tow truck on the way, but it's coming down from Kingman. So we're probably looking at about two hours to get here. It's about 4 p.m. So I still have light right now, but I'm betting I'm going to be dark by the time the tow truck gets here, which is going to, it's going to, might not get as good a photo as I thought <laughs> for my first tow truck experience. Um, I think my, one of my first tow truck experiences ever, but it's certainly with the coach, but probably a two hour drive up to Kingman. So we'll be getting there about eight o'clock tonight, depending on what they say in the morning. We'll decide if Julie drives on by herself to Las Vegas to meet up with her friend or if we pack a bag and both drive up and stay in a hotel. Just that depends on what the shop thinks on if it's going to take one day or more than a week. It's going to take, we've had no mechanical issues to speak of in two and a half years and in this three week period we've had three mechanical issues. And this repair, who knows, <laughs> who knows what it'll be. but. Uh, it's, it's likely electrical system could potentially be related to transmission, but I don't think so. I think it's mostly just electrical. And then we'll also need to buy some new house batteries because they're completely toast. So we've got three new batteries we're replacing this week. So that's going to be expensive. Okay, so Julie's back from the auto parts store. I've got my brand new battery. We're between rainstorms in the desert. So, and I still have a little bit of daylight left. So I'm going to try and put the new battery in before dark. And then the tow truck's probably gonna be here in another hour or so. It'll be interesting to see what happens if I put a new battery in. If it starts up and acts fine, we'll see. So now we'll just gotta hook it up and go. hope for the best. Hope for the best. Still got probably an hour before the tow truck gets here. Well, let's uh, let's give it a go. Starts right up. That's good. See what else happens. So. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it all seemed to happen. Go crazy when I hit the hazard button. The mechanics seem to think that's coincidental, but it happened with a huge clunk the second I hit that thing. Uh, and then the dash lights all started going crazy right then. Turned it off, and then when I, and then I was going so slow, and I pulled to the side, I thought I'd hit it again, and it, it wigged out again. And so, I do think there's something related to that. I'm really not comfortable hitting the button when things are going so well right now. Regular lights all work. What do you think? Should I touch that button or no? Just leave it. So the coach is running. Let me just put it in gear and go a few feet. Make sure that all seems fine. That was just a camera. Didn't seem right, did it? Didn't sound good. Didn't seem right. What was it? It was just a little slip of the You train. think it's transmission related? One other thing that I think is pretty funny about this situation is that we're in the middle of the desert and it's raining. <laughs> they hardly ever get rain here, but it's raining today. And um, especially funny 
is you know people always talk about how they were in the middle of nowhere when they have a uh, mechanical breakdown and we are kind of in the middle of nowhere in that you know it's all just desert and it's on the side of the highway but really funny because we started trying to look up on GPS to figure out where we are we're literally five miles from the town of nothing <laughs> <laughs> the town name is nothing. So we're not in the middle of nowhere, but we are five miles from nothing. That's pretty funny. The only thing in nothing Arizona is a cell phone tower. That's it. <laughs> if you think it'll make it, you have her follow. Follow me, and we'll yep. just take a tra trail it on up there. Yep. We'll stay in the right hand lane, just take it easy. And if you start having problems, hit the shoulder. Okay. Okay, right, well, let's, let's go do it then. Let's do it. So, because the coach was parked on a hill, the tow truck driver suggested we drive a little further up to a level clearing in order to load the coach onto the tow truck. Once we got there, the rain had really set in and we were really having second thoughts about whether or not we wanted to proceed with the tow. The coach did seem to be driving fine. We figured as long as we could follow the tow truck into Kingman with the Mini behind, that would be a pretty safe option. And if there were any problems, we could always pull over. So we got dropped off by the tow truck and now we're here in the parking lot of the RV repair shop. <laughs> In Kingman, Arizona. Well, the fridge isn't working. Yeah, the fridge isn't working. The water pump isn't working, so we can't turn on turn on water. No, but the good news for the fridge is that <laughs> it's only 35 degrees outside, so <laughs> <laughs> I doubt the fridge is going to be It'll working be too hard tonight. We do have hook up to 110 volt power. We have got the electric heater running. I was able to boil a kettle and make tea. We've got the cell phones charging. Now those house batteries are clearly beyond gone. And ironically the last few weeks we've been talking about getting new batteries in the next month and we've already started researching on that but we hadn't completed the research which is why we hadn't replaced them yet. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, it's well, all part of the adventure. Yeah it's part of the adventure but we'll be right and uh, we're safe we're settled and, uh, we'll, and warm. we'll get a good night's sleep and hopefully, see how it goes tomorrow. Hopefully be in Las Vegas hooked up in our campground this time tomorrow night. I would like well to and think truly so before that. well before this. <laughs> They're showing balls and they don't look good. They replaced the house batteries, but the power still wasn't working on the coach. Mark had to get back to work, so I hung out with the guys at the coach as they continued to troubleshoot the problem. Think it's just a fuse or something, or too early to tell? It's usually this uh, relay. So you just replaced the solenoid in here, right? That one right there. Okay. I'm just going to put power on both sides of it right now and then I'll have you test the lights inside. Okay. All right, so the fridge is working again. Lights are working. Yeah. Oh, we're back in good shape. So the guys at the shop identified it was a faulty solenoid, replaced that and pretty soon we were on our way to Vegas. I guess this is the way it goes, you know, two and a half years with no real issues and then you get a bunch in just a few weeks, that's just the luck of the draw but I think for the most part we're still pretty fortunate when you get ready for this lifestyle. There's a lot of things that you can save money on but there's also going to be a likely an increase in vehicle maintenance. Alright, I guess that's it for now. So this repair with the solenoid and the batteries wasn't covered by our extended service contract, but so many of the other repairs were. So that made November. It was an expensive month for repairs yeah. for sure, and a lot of hassle, but. 
wasn't as bad as it could have been. It wasn't as bad as it could have been because a lot of those repairs were offset by the extended service contract. So we know that owning an RV, stuff is going to happen, things are going to break, things are going to need repairs. I just don't really like when it all happens kind of at the same time, yeah. in the same month, and the same credit card bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nicer when it spreads it out a bit. So that wraps up three breakdowns and their corresponding repairs in only a month. We'll of course put more detail in the related blog posts at rvlove.com. And the links will be down below. Hope you found this helpful. If not, at least mildly amusing and entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and we're wishing you safe and reliable, smooth travels. Until next time, we'll see, see you on, on the road. road.